everyone, uh, once again to our webinar. Um, my name is Chandan and I'm a digital sales manager at Ingati. With me, I have my colleague Jay, he's a senior sales manager, speaking with the customers alongside with me. A very interested topic uh, that we have chosen for this webinar, because considering, you know, when you are in a era where GPT is ruling, where everyone wants to know what exactly AI is capable enough to do. So over a recent experiences or maybe over the speaking that we've been doing in um, BFSI segment, where all the businesses that we are speaking recently, we have identified many of the key pointers or maybe the pain points where they want to make sure that what all things can be considered. Everyone wants to know that, yes, technology and finance, they go hand in hand. But yeah, when I talk about OpenAI, when I talk about chat GPT, how exactly it can solve the issues? What are the uh, use cases that we can consider? And based on the entire interaction that we are doing over a period of time, we have come up with um, many of the key pointers where we think that yes, in this entire BFSI segment, this can actually help them to make sure that things are happening in a very efficient manner. And probably, Jay, uh, you must have also uh, you know, spoken to many of the businesses. I would also like to hear from you uh, when it comes to this particular topic. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've been speaking to a lot of customers. We've been hearing about roadblocks that are there on the journey today. So, um, especially um, in the entire finance space, right? What we've seen is that customers have a limited uh, attention span when it comes to chatbots. So what's the best way that we can serve a customer, answer their first query, right? Only if they see some value on, on, on chatting with a chatbot is when they'd want to spend more time with it. So that's something that we're aiming to do. But to talk about some of the roadblocks, some of the, uh, the pain points that customers are highlighting to us is basically in the middle of, let's just say me going and opening an account, I have queries as to why do you need this information from me or will this information be stored somewhere or anything along those lines. I want to come and ask a question. If, I, if you're providing me the automation to actually open an account, also provide me the automation to get a response. I don't want to stop in the middle and then have to call someone up. So that is something that we, we're, we're dealing with and solving. What we can also do is, uh, you know, analyze documents. So companies, they spend a lot of time, they spend a lot of money on actually writing blogs, um, preparing financial statements, a lot of tabular data. But how do you even know if all of that money is getting an ROI for you? Because the customer probably doesn't have time to go through all of that. So uh, yeah. you can actually use our solution to, you know, um, analyze all that information. When a customer comes and asks a question, it will read through that data for them and bang, your answer is right there. They don't have to compare Q1 performance to Q4 performance by going to three different sheets. They just ask a question and the report is right there in front of them. Also, um, the major uh, one major thing is this is all for obviously customer acquisition, but even on the customer support point, lots of money is invested into customer support agents who are trying to be there 24 7 for customers and they're getting, getting repetitive queries. Why not they focus their attention on actually answering queries that require human attention and let the bot bots and chatbots on multiple channels um, of discovery actually take care of, um, of you know, repetitive customer support queries or even new queries which the bots knowledge base will be able to give a customer a simple answer to so these are the kind of roadblocks that we're facing today and uh, uh, that we're actually dealing with today and what the customers are facing today exactly yeah correctly said that uh, yeah, when i talk about all these things these are the major key pointers where either we speak with the product manager or the person who's handling the entire customer service for a fintech company or a bfsi segment but what i'm more interested probably do we have something which where we can actually show them uh, the use cases or how easy it is or how simple it is where the entire end-to-end -end journey can be automated with the help of a solution absolutely absolutely i mean i wouldn't be speaking if there was no substance so let me quickly uh, present my screen for you guys and give you and give you a simple idea of what this entire uh, you know capability is uh, you know doing for customers this is a sample finance bot that we've created on a few use cases i'll take you through each of them so when i start interacting with the bot now what you see right now the bot is just sitting on a standalone link on the website what Ingati brings to the table over here is that this thing can be deployed on Google business messages, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Instagram, on your own mobile application. You can solve various use cases across channels and the bot operates in more or less the same way. Now, the first thing that I do is this bot is offering general investment insights. 
and I'm actually just agreeing to a simple policy. Now, once I click here, what the bot asked me is what would you like to do? So it asked me, would you like to ask a query, manage my portfolio, um, open a demand account? So let's just say I'll go ahead and ask the bot that I want to ask a query. It gives me a bit um, some kind of questions as to what I can ask it. So let's just say I'll pick up one of them and I'll say, um, you know, um, why is um, real estate a good asset? It's telling me, is real estate a good asset? I'll actually go ahead and ask, why is real estate a good asset? Yeah. Yeah, we can't deny that yeah. many of the people do ask those dynamic queries. These days. Exactly, exactly. So what the bot will be able to do is that it's going to go ahead and using the knowledge base that it has been trained on, it's actually giving me a response. Now I'm going to hide the below question, below answer for you for some for some minutes while I talk you through what exactly is this answer being derived from. So unlike we say a lot of chat GPT, but obviously your business isn't want to give out openly available information to the customers. They want to drive their customers towards information that they have spent their time and money coming up with, right? So what we can do is we can limit the knowledge base of this bot. We just use a large language model, model in order to give out responses, but we limit it to the data set or to the knowledge base that the business provides to us so that the responses come specific to the business. They try and give responses based on what information is provided. Now, a cooler feature, as you can see, now you've taken a good amount of time. So this is what we call a nudge. So this can be set up based on the, number, um, the amount of time or the amount of questions that a user asks. Post which the bot actually pushes a user towards because what we're doing right now is just we're giving out generalized information. As a business, you're probably interested in generating a lead, getting them to maybe book an appointment with one of your financial experts. And that's exactly what this bot is pushing me to do. Now, if I click on yes, book an appointment, as you can see, it's you know it's asking me specialized real estate agent. I can even go ahead and schedule a call directly. So for example, I'll select this Monday for a time. It'll ask me, please select a preferred time and a time slot that suits you. So what we're doing is we're actually combining the best of both worlds, right? What this, this response that came out and the recognizing of me wanting a specialist in real estate is something that um, that GPT took care of. But then obviously a plain simple chatbot helps me book my appointments over here. For example, I want to go ahead and select my consultant, enter my name, enter an email address. All of this information can actually be generated uh, directly from here. So um, yeah, as you can see, I'll get an OTP and the bot will actually go ahead and help me book an appointment. So this is one of the flows which GPT powers. Um, another option which we're doing is actually opening accounts. So as you can see, we can go ahead and help customers not only open a DMAT account, in this case, it's a DMAT account. It could be a bank account. It could be me applying for a loan, checking eligibility. All of that can actually be taken care of. This is more of a bot flow, but we will be capable of dealing with that entire journey, starting from uploading documents, e-signing documents. Everything can be taken care of on a bot. Additionally, uh, additionally, some kind of suggestions can be thrown out by the bot as well. So, for example, a user would maybe a first time investor uh, may, may come and ask a question that, you know, what is the best asset for me to invest in? Based on certain parameters, we can actually determine. So, as you can see, maybe I'm somewhere in the middle of being a high risk and a low risk, low risk investor. And my retirement goal would probably be wealth accumulation. Based on this, um, you know, it's asking me, do I have any investments? So let's just say I have an investment in MSIP. So I'll just go ahead and say that. How often do I wish to rebalance my portfolio? So what this is doing is, for example, we've all gone online at some point in our lives and maybe um, asked asked the bot that I want to hit this target weight the, uh, or ask the some software I want to hit this target weight. It'll actually tell you, okay, you know, what's your lifestyle? How, um, how often do you mm -hmm. work out? Based on that, it's giving you advice. Very similar to that, we're doing this for finance as well. Based on um, based on the uh, user's risk portfolio, based on, um, you know, certain portfolios, we can push across financial products to them and um, get them to talk to people from the company, get them to talk to sales executives, which eventually go on and become big accounts. So, yeah, this is basically, um, you know, a bot that we have built and we can obviously customize this based on the kind of company that you're from. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So that not only, you know, helps them uh, just to engage it, but uh, the acquisition also increases via automation where 24 by 7, a channel is open for their end customers and end-to-end -end thing is being taken. But my next question, which, you know, which is a major pain point where every, may, maybe I'm speaking with n number of people, they ask that, from a customer centric, what all things that they also need to do, how this entire AI assistance can come into picture where from a customer 
end point what all things needs to be taken into consideration absolutely so i mean for our customers itself right what they want to know is that how easy is this is this functionality for for them to actually go ahead and implement it shouldn't take a long turn around time they don't have to wait on our, our our team to actually help them out it's very simple so the first feature that we have so i'll break this entire jubilee thing that we have into three features the first one is docusense okay. docusense is the feature that i just showed wherein a user can actually go and ask a question based on the knowledge base that the bot has been fed it is able to use a large language model and give a response and give a very personalized response in that so as you can see you can simply come to ingati's portal upload a file or a url so a url could typically be you know publicly available information information on the website but you can also upload like a pdf document for example it's certain documents and policies only available to an existing customer which they would be able to access only after they authenticate themselves so you can actually go ahead and upload these kind of documents and it's simple within a few seconds the bot is able to train itself that's amazing meaning uh, this would actually save uh, the time of the business as well when they don't need to train the bot on each and every faqs or maybe prepare certain questions so yeah that's yes. very efficient but a, a, a follow up question because there can be a possibility that we have trained and for uh, we, we have provided the documents we have given all the information which is there but still the right. customer might have like issues where some way the bot is not able to answer and then the chat get triggers to a live agent so do we have something maybe if you can give me from an agent centric how can i assess those customers accordingly so that the overall customer experience is not impacted absolutely absolutely so this is just an example one more example what you see can see on your screens of what uh, you know how it can work where a user simply comes and asks a question it's available across multiple channels i can ask a question the bot is able okay. to give me a response so it's just taking data from a brochure but it's giving me a pointed response i don't have to go to page 5 page 6 of the brochure it's telling me this is the response that you want and if you want to refer to page 6 i can give you a direct link to click there as well um coming to the agent feature as well right so for example let's just say i have gone to an insurance company but i'm i'm asking them about loans now the, obviously the, the insurance company is not going to have much information about loan data so let's just say the bot will say okay you know maybe i'm not trained enough to assist assist you with that can you maybe escalate this chat to an agent now this is also something that we provide where an agent takes over the conversation now once the agent takes over the conversation and gets a question um, on the screen and they want an actual explanation of it we actually give them a step by step way to reply so the agent can actually query the bot saying how can i actually help the user an explanation is given with step by step advice as to how would be the best way to deal with such a customer query while keeping customer satisfaction highest also the sentiment of the so for example the the user is speaking in a happy tone or a sad tone that sort of information is picked up by the bot and is shown to the agent that this is the current sentiment of the user and you may want to actually use uh, use that um, sentiment additionally that is something that we can do for an agent the agent can also query the bot and get the exact response uh, from the from the bot's knowledge base so if the agent wants to copy paste the response in the bot's knowledge base they simply ask a question they get an option to select copy paste it and send it that is more agent centric let's talk about the people who joined here who are let's just say the heads of customer experience the people who take care or monitor or supervise these agents on a daily basis they obviously may not have the time to track performance okay. other than going other than actually going and seeing what c sat score which half the time let's face it i don't if i'm using a bot and the bot asks me how was i satisfied i will probably if my work's done i'll just click off i'm not going to give a positive or a negative response so a lot of these conversations fall under the radar now for even the even the um, supervisor or the head of customer experience to go and read each conversation is practically impossible because there's multiple messages exchanged what we have is a feature called conversation summary where well, essentially if i come and ask the bot um after the agent has actually resolved the conversation or said that okay you know in their books this conversation and this customer was satisfied with the response the bot okay. automatically takes the the context of the conversation and generates a one page summary so as you can see on your screen a one page summary sorry a one paragraph summary actually is generated which gives the person reading this a gist of what happened at the and pay attention to the last line as well like sentiment of the user and the agent was friendly throughout the conversation so that is also captured and this is not going to be of the entire conversation it's going to be once the agent takes over because that is something that the agent is marking as a resolved conversation 
So someone would be interested as to why it got resolved, how it got resolved, and if it was resolved, was the was the customer actually satisfied? So that is something that we have in the conversation summary and for the agent space. Yeah, that's amazing because I could also think of you know more advanced feature where if an agent also requested something that hey, can you give me a gist of what exactly happened? The and the I mean the uh, for the agent can also give it to the end customer that hey, this was the. analytics or maybe this was the conversation that you did with one of the agents now one more thing lastly when i talk about uh, the businesses as well or maybe the marketers where they reach out or retarget the customer where an information needs to be passed or there's a new product launch that can come into picture similarly like when you run different whatsapp campaign sometimes as it's the same domain the entire bfsi segment is the same so if you see the templates and everything are also in a similar line but how can we add more value to that do we have something where you can leverage this capability absolutely absolutely loyalists of ingati webinars will know the amount of times he's spoken about whatsapp broadcasting right now what we've done is that we've taken this to the next level wherein using a campaign assist feature all you oh. marketers out there who are struggling day in and day out to come out with more content you can actually just give the bot as a north star or something that you would want a template message to convey to the customer so in this case it's just simply saying that okay you know the 60% off and that's how simple it is for you you just know you want to send your customer saying there's a 60% off sale on laptops and that's it we do the rest for you we can actually make it a more attractive message something that um, as you can see on your screens as well right it adds emojis it makes it uh, it adds a lot of language there it kind of makes it more salesy so it picks up on the sentiment that you're trying to give it and it will give you a few suggestions then all your job is to pick out maybe one maybe two maybe pick out all three try out how each of them actually work and the next time you're aware that okay you know maybe this is the best message in order to send um, when i'm running when i'm running a sale and this is all powered by um, chat gpt and open ai so that is something that is um, doable and very very helpful for marketers yeah that that's amazing like actually it is time like uh saving is well where i am i'm just providing a context similar to gpt where you just say a word or maybe say a prompt and the entire details is there well the the reason i'm asking because these were the major things you know when we or rather you must have also spoken to many of the businesses where they wanted to highlight many of the features or maybe these are the pain points which they wanted to consider and yes from the entire solution standpoint where everyone wants to make sure that how open ai or the gpt can actually help the entire bfsi segment i believe we have uh, considered most of the points here in absolutely. a very simple manner absolutely and looking at the brands that we are working on this with right they are world class brands especially in the bfsi space both in india and abroad we have zac bank from mongolia qatar insurance from qatar tokyo marine insurance from the uae from india we have hdfc capital moneybox finance bandhan bank um all of these brands are actually working with us towards driving conversations um with uh, with um, you know um, conversational intelligence and um, getting great roi out of it yes exactly so yeah uh, that is something uh, i believe that sums up everything but yeah i, I i'll be able to you know first of all uh, you can scan this qr code where all the resources would be provided all the information that we have at the back end and meanwhile people so i would request everyone to take out your phones take out maybe about 10 20 seconds of your time scan this where you'll be able to get all the blog access all the information that we have created and in a period of maybe 5 6 seconds we'll start off with the qna as well right um, feel free uh, if you have any questions regarding the same because considering uh, the solutions considering the pain points we were able to deliver but yeah we are up for a qna sessions guys please make sure that if you have any of the questions you can enter it in the chat bot and me and jay are here to answer the same absolutely so i think uh, we have yeah. the first yeah. two questions which are almost along the same lines is that will your data actually be stored with gpt servers and no it's going to be stored uh, on our own ingati servers we're not going to be sharing this entire documents or these links mm-hmm. links are anyway publicly available information i think the major uh, the major concern is when it comes to personal documents and uh, you know internal documents which companies don't want to share but you can be rest assured that uh, we don't actually give this information uh, um, out much 
And what we can do is that when we're actually using the LLM to respond, we just give it those one or two lines of information from where our NLP picks out the information so it can come up with a response, but the document remains on our servers. Um, yeah, I hope that answers it. Um, coming to the next question, how can we integrate with your CRM, ERP, and ticketing systems? So I, I completely understand the use case is probably going to be around customer support, customer acquisition, lead generation. We can easily take care of that with our native integrations with popular CRMs like HubSpot, Salesforce, um, and ticketing systems like FreshDesk, Zendesk. Anything out of these, um, we can obviously use um, APIs. Call Cloud Solutions have APIs nowadays, and we will be able to easily solve the use case that you are looking for. Okay, that's amazing. Um, Jim, one question I have, uh, maybe I can ask it. Uh, so there was one of a loan company where they said that how, uh, what all use cases can be considered or how it can actually improve the overall customer experience. Absolutely. So even, I mean, even for a loan company, right, let's just talk yeah. about if I want a new loan, I want to check my eligibility before I even upload like a PAN card and other card. Let's just say I don't even know if my age, so for example, I want health insurance. I don't know if maybe a 23 year old can actually go and get health insurance. Does it make sense at this stage of my life? So those kind of questions which come up in the acquisition part, which a user would have in their minds before they even decide to talk to sales or get those follow-up calls is something that the bot will be able to um, take care of. The second kind of um, question would be as to once I'm already, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I already have a loan. Each month I want the convenience of paying my loan mm -hmm. on WhatsApp, paying my EMI on WhatsApp. We can also take care of that. WhatsApp Pay is something that is launched now, wherein a user can actually send, um, you know, get a payment link directly on WhatsApp and make a payment right then and there. So those kind of reminders can be sent out. So mm -hmm. um, we have another question on how yes. can eSense be actually help, uh, help us in the insurance domain. So absolutely, in the insurance domain as well, I mean, you guys can all come on personalized demos after this call, but uh, we have a bot that essentially replaces an insurance agent. It can take okay. the information that is required in order for a system to calculate an insurance premium and give it to the user. That's how simple and easy we've made it in the middle. At any point, a user wants to ask a question, they'll be able to ask a question, but simply based on their inputs, it essentially replaces an insurance agent right there. Um, so yes, do, um, so I have another question. Um, uh, do you yeah. have the feature of hyperlocal catalog that Geomart has? Yes. Yes. We can do that. Yeah. And, um, uh, how can you have like maybe a stock broker in this space? So absolutely. So I spoke about this at the start of the call as well. Opening an account is something that's mm -hmm. made very easy by most stock brokers nowadays, but maybe it requires the extra step of going and downloading an app. We can actually do that entire thing on WhatsApp itself, where in, in a conversational format, the user is uploading their documents, e-signing their documents, but they're also asking questions and getting responses. Other than that, as I said, there is a lot of money being spent on, uh, especially for the premium customers of these, of these firms to actually generate reports with stock to buy, with stock not to buy, which is the, in that industry that is mm -hmm. the hottest right now. But again, you're probably sending them newsletters or emails which have zero open rates you can do that on whatsapp right now and additionally not only sending them on whatsapp the user can come and ask let's just say compare q1 performance to q4 performance and gpd is able to generate that response and again keeping in mind that that data is going to be specific to what we have trained it with it won't go outside yes uh, so we have another follow-up question from shweta like can we send dynamic catalogs based on location or pin code yeah, absolutely. I think that is something that is possible as long as the user can enter that information and we capture that location based on those parameters. That's something that's easily doable. Yes. So yeah, Velanki, uh, uh, I also to read out your question. So Jay Velanki has asked that are there charts or infographics supported as output for the chatbot? Also, is the chatbot able to crawl through the web or restricted to the data feed? Yeah, absolutely. As I've been saying throughout, like crawling through the information that is provided is all is going to do. So hallucination of information is not going to be a response. And Velinky, um, yes, the bot will be able to give out um, any kind of data, like an image, a video, a document, or textual data. The bot can respond in any of those um, any of those formats. Okay, uh, that's amazing. Uh, any other question? Let me just check if I have missed. Okay. Okay, so I guess uh, we covered everything. Uh, guys, if there's anything else you want to know more about how these things can be done, 
uh, an actual virtual demonstration of how issues or maybe what all use cases can be considered. Uh, get in touch. We have everything. You can reach out to us on LinkedIn. The number will be provided. You can go to the research blogs. And yeah, let us know if you have everything. Uh, the link is there in the chat as well. Okay. I appreciate uh, right. everyone. Yeah. Jay, you want to say something? No, no, absolutely. Just want to thank everyone for joining in today and have a great day ahead. Yes. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, giving your time today. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care.